Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Dylan Marlon. I am the owner of the Houston Texans and we are not going to waste any time today. We are going to hop straight in to covering what happened last week in our first preseason game of the year. Alrighty, so we all know if you're watching this at home, it may have been an ugly one to watch. The score ended up being 44 to 14 at the end of the game, but it proved a couple of valuable things for us. But overall, we shouldn't go with some comparisons. The main thing we want to look at, offensive yards gained. They outperformed us 365 to 213. We have to step up our game there. Our run game was impressive for what it was, so we'll take that with a grain of salt as well. Our turnovers, we turned the ball over five times and we couldn't get them to turn it over once. That is something we're gonna have to work on further on because we have to show that we can take the ball away and we have to limit the mistakes that we're gonna make if we wanna be successful. Along with that, another key thing I wanna talk about was time of possession. It was close, it was very close. However, they did have a greater time of possession and we need to control the ball more if we're gonna be winning games. All right, and let's hop straight into it. We all know throughout our entire first game, I made sure our coaching staff was trying out all of our quarterbacks, giving them all a chance to prove themselves and see who was going to be the starter this year. And honestly, if there are any of them are gonna be a starter for the future. And honestly, I wanna say the one that impressed me the most is definitely not somebody we're looking at to be our starter for the long term not necessarily for any skill reason but our man cam newton our newly signed veteran to help mentor not only um i'm sorry blanking on me i'm sorry okay not only to mentor davis mills but also for any quarterback that may come after them if we happen to decide that we need to move on so i say this because he had a 144.3 pass rating 64 yards and a touchdown that was off of, I believe, one drive, maybe two. Great game for him. Not sacked at all. Completion percentage, 85%. 9 point yard, 9.1 yards of attempt. We can't ask for much better than that. What I do want to talk about, though, Jameis Winston, Andy Dalton. They threw all over us for their time there. And yes, they are quarterbacks that have both been starters in this league. But they're not skilled enough for us to be letting them do that to us. It's unacceptable. They both had a touchdown, both over, both near 150 yards, if not over. One sack, two sacks. It's not enough. We have to do more to get to them. We can't have them succeeding like they did. But along with this, we're also going to scroll down. We also had Jeff Driscoll. He had a shot, but he didn't really have a great shot. So we may look to involve him more in the offense as the preseason continues. And Davis Mills, he had plenty of opportunities. He just didn't show what we needed so far. Hopefully he can bounce back in other weeks in the preseason, but he did not have a great game in our first week. He threw two interceptions and his longest pass was only for 21 yards. Unacceptable for us. In our rushing game, however, we definitely want to highlight our running back, Damon Pierce. I made it clear to our coaching staff, hey, this is our young rookie. We need to get him involved and see if he has what it takes. And in the first game, he proved it against an explosive defense. He pulled off 12 rushes, 57 yards, 4.8 a carry. Incredible, incredible work by him. Five broken tackles on the day, yards after contact, 29, a long run of 11. May not have been super explosive, but he was consistently good, and that's what matters in the run game that I'm looking for for this team. On the other hand, we did not do well stopping the run. Mark Ingram showed us why he is a key, key backup for them, a key running back number two for them, because he averaged 3.2 a carry, 51 yards, two touchdowns on the day, he did have one fumble, but it did not make up for the production that he had on there. Marlon Mack also did pretty well, but Alvin Kamara was also a monster in the running game. He was 2.5 yards to carry, one touchdown quick early in the game with only the one quarter he played. We're going to have to do better to stop the run. Receiving, Michael Thomas, he has a huge stat line, but honestly, he shouldn't have. That We had a key mistake in the game where we had a, a defensive back blow a coverage he was wide open no one near him it's unacceptable so things like that shouldn't happen that is why we have the preseason to make those mistakes but we have to clear that up that 124 yards and a touchdown should be wiped erased not fair whatsoever we should not let those things happen marquez calloway deep threat for them he was making incredible plays deep shots down the field although when we switched up the matchup put Derek singley jr out there on him he did an incredible job covering him so that is something we will highlight here We'll make sure to keep that in mind. I also want to talk about Brevin Jordan made great contribution for us. Nico Collins, Kyle Rudolph. We definitely shared the ball around equally. Nobody really stand, stood out as a receiver. Although I do want to highlight John Mechie the third with two catching, two receiving touchdowns on the day. Huge, huge con contribution for him. Our only two scores on the day. We love to see a rookie like that making an impact. And on the defense side of the ball, 
honestly, their defense did pretty well just containing us. But I do want to highlight on our side of the defense, Eric Murray, our strong safety, our backup strong safety. Incredible, incredible job on the blitz. We, we were sending heat. We're trying to be more, uh, more effective this year, trying to send more heat, more pressure. Let the offense against us make their own mistakes and take the risks. And he contributed two sacks on two blitzes from the safety position. We love to see that. We also had Rasheem Green get a sack, and that was huge for us. And I believe that was all, yes, that was all the sacks for the day. But those are key contributions that we will definitely need later on in the year. Interceptions, on the other hand, we cannot be throwing interceptions like we were. Justin Evans made an incredible play on the ball. We will give him that. And Dylan Maven, he just made a play. It was a long shot at the end of the game, just trying to take a shot. Now that we have covered all that, let's talk the business side of our game here. So our stadium construction for our new relocation is still underway. We have no news about that just yet, but we are going to move on. So one thing I do want to focus on here is our stadium experience that we have right now. Although we're going to be moving out, we still want to capitalize for our fans and give them a fair, honest, effective use of their money and show them that we care about them being fans here. So we're going to check out our ticket prices. Tickets are cheaper than usual in the club section. We love to see that. And then T Quinn 45 said, I like that they haven't overpriced Mazane tickets. And then Houston on Heroes, Texans tickets aren't cheap in the seaweed section, but they aren't expensive either. So we love to see that. I think that's uh, those are fair numbers for us. We don't want to overprice too high, of course, because honestly, if we're going to be real, we are not a great team this year. We haven't been effective over the past, and we need to show that we are going to be a good team if we ever hope to raise prices for the tickets. So then we're going to move on to merchandise. See what we got going on here. Houston Hero said, it's too bad the Texans charge so much for a Cam Newton signed football. Should be cheaper. You know what? I can help you out with that. So we're going to head over here to memorabilia, Cam Newton signed football. We're going to drop it 25 bucks. We're going to try and help out the fans as much as we can. Texans for Life said, it's a shame that a new era knit hat is so expensive at the Texans team store. Let's see what we can do about that. Let's see, new era. Let's see if I can look through our system here. New era knit hat. There we are. We're going to drop it down five bucks to $20 try and help him out a little bit as well and texans for life also said prices continue going up for a new area 39 30 hat at the texans team store add a few bucks every year okay so let's hop over there we can also help out with that of course inflation happens prices go up however we do need to do our best to make sure we can keep prices down as far as we can so we're going to raise that up we're going to lower that a little bit there oh i believe i missed it okay Bring that down to 25 bucks see what we can do there we're just trying to capitalize get the most money we can but also be fair to the fans give them good prices make them be willing to pay the prices that we're putting up concessions as well let's take a look at this one stadium prices are always going to be expensive but the texans are reasonable when it comes to coffee we love to see that that's what we try and do we're trying to be reasonable as we are um let's see rowdy gobert said rowdy gabbert oh i apologize rowdy gabbert my apologies but i'm happy the coast the cost of vanilla ice cream cone at the Texans game isn't too high. We love to hear that as well. And then it's getting tough to afford popcorn in Texans games, but it won't affect my fanhood. You know, I appreciate the loyalty, the respect of our team and the fandom you have, but because of that fandom, we're gonna try and help you out. So we're gonna go over to popcorn. We're gonna drop it a dollar. We're gonna try and help you out as much as we can. We hope you enjoy the popcorn as well. We hope it's more affordable dropping it down a dollar. All right, and our coaching staff, of course, that was not the game we were looking for. We only got one of our goals done for the game, but it was good that we got that goal done. And now we have a more reasonable projection of how these preseason games might go. And we know where to set our goals at so we can hopefully get better development, not only out of the players, but also out of our coaching staff. Alrighty, and while I have you all here, I want to take a look real quick. As we can see, we already covered our preseason week one game, and we are coming up on our 85-man deadline. So although we have much breathing room here at 75 players right now, we're going to try and be ahead of the game. We're going to try and cut down some of our roster to help out at the end of the preseason so we don't have to let too many pieces go and we can take our time to think about what we got. Alrighty, so as the owner, I've already consulted with coaches. We're going to go through the roster. Of course, at the end of the day, I do make the personal decision and I want to let all the fans know, all the players know if anybody is watching that before we do anything out of respect i want you all to know i am very thankful for all the hard work all of our players have put in and if we say goodbye today it may not be the end of the road for them and are on our team or very much for any other team all of our players are talented players we wish the best for them but unfortunately this is a business we have made decisions like this and i will let you guys know what decisions we are making this turn all right firstly simply due to the nature of the depth we have in this position right now 
We're going to be letting Jet Anderson go from the running back position. Again, he did a great job for us, but he just doesn't fit our plans right now, and we have too much depth at the position. So we're going to let him go. No effect in our cap. Again, along the same nature, we have five tight ends on the roster. There's no reason we're going to need five tight ends on this team for the for the rest of the season. So unfortunately, we are going to be letting Tegan Kitoriano go. I appreciated his time here. He is a rookie. Hopefully, he can find success on another team. Unfortunately, it's not going to be with ours. At the left tackle position, we're looking at Cedric Ogbuehi. We're going to be letting him go as well. And with that release, we did free $1.12 million in cap room. We incurred 200,000 penalty. It should make itself up. At our defensive left end position, we're going to be letting Derek Rivers go. And with the release of Derek Rivers, we're filling up $1.15 million in cap. And we're also going to be letting go of the six year player at the defensive right end position, Jordan Jenkins. We're going to be letting him go as well. Mostly because he's freeing up $3 million in cap for us, which could be huge in the, huge in the off season for us. And I believe our last cut of the day is solely because of the depth again that we have right now at the cornerback position. We're going to be letting Fabian Moreau go. He's been a talented player in this league and hopefully he can find another team that he can work out better with. He's not going to give us an effect on the cap room situation, but unfortunately we can't have him here. We're going to have to let him go. And now that we made our cuts, we are down to 69 players. Nice. And anyways, we're going to go now that we know the players we're going to be bringing into this week. We're going to hop straight into the weekly strategy and see what we got going on. Actually, I apologize. We're not going to hop in there straight yet. We're going to check out the team we're going to be going up against. And if you guys are looking here, you guys know we're going to be playing the LA Rams, the Super Bowl defending champs. First things first, looking at our injuries here, they have a backup left end, Michael Hoach. He's age 24, speed rusher for them. He is out with a dislocated wrist. So in the preseason, this is somebody, this is somebody we would have seen going up against, but we're not going to have to worry about him today. All right, and the Rams, we're just going to do a quick breeze through the team. Obviously, we're not going to cover every player that we're going to be seeing in the preseason as they're going to be playing a lot of backups, giving a lot of people a lot of chances to get their jobs here. We're just going to do a quick breeze through with some important players we all know about. Matthew Stafford, of course, longtime vet in Detroit, came to, came to the Rams this past year, won a Super Bowl in his first year. He's hoping to have another incredible year this year at 34 years of age he's backed up by john wolford we've seen him come in and be key for them in this year at halfback they made a huge trade recently they have brought in kareem hunt to solidify this run game for them their passing game was incredible last year their defense was incredible last year and they're trying to lock up this run game with the 27 year old all pro level player kareem hunt he's backed up by of course cam Akers and daryl henderson jr at the receiver position, last year's triple crown winner, offensive player of the year, Cooper Cup. He had a phenomenal year, incredible award winner, record breaking. He did an incredible job. They're happy to have him back. He also has Van Jefferson and Tutu Atwell as his other wide receivers on the field. At tight end, they have the young Tyler Higby. He's going to be huge for them. He's backed up by Bryson Hopkins. At left tackle, Joseph Notebaum, David Edwards at the left guard, Brian Allen at center, Bobby Evans Jr. at right guard, and at the right tackle, Rob Havenstein. At the left end, they have Sean Robinson. At the right end, the multiple, multiple time defensive player of the year, maybe the best defensive player that's ever played the game, Aaron Donald. Usually he's playing in our, at the defensive tackle position. It appears that they've switched him over to the right end for this year. We can see that. That's because they have great gains locking up the, def the defensive tackle position for them. At the left outside linebacker, they have Leonard Floyd, 80 overall, 29 years old. And in the middle linebacker position, the longtime vet, all pro player, Bobby Wagner is locking up that middle for them. At right outside linebacker, they got Justin Hollins. And in the defensive back position, another former defensive player of the year, Jalen Ramsey. He is locking up the defense for them. He's going one-on-one -on -one with our best receiver on the team right now. That's going to be Brandon Cooks for our team. So we will see how Brandon Cooks performs against elite level coverage against him. He also has Troy Hill and David Long Jr. in the backfield for him there. In the free safety position, Taylor Rapp is covering that. In the strong safety position, Jordan Fuller. At kicker, Matt Gay. And at punter, Riley Dixon. So with that, we're going to head straight into our weekly strategy regarding training, regarding our offensive game plan, defensive game plan. Let's take a moment to figure that out right now. So from our training priorities, it's the preseason. It's time for people to earn their spots. We are going all in full pads, 
everybody full participation we want to see the most growth we can especially with a young team like ours that is our main priority yes we want to keep our players healthy but we also want to see them striving gaining skills working harder and getting better as our football team our defensive game plan focus for the rams today we i believe we're going to go with defending the medium pass yes they brought in kareem hunt for the run game although their offensive line is not as impressive as Kareem Hunt may be used to. So he may not be able to get those holes that he may have been able to get in prior years. So our main goal is going to be to lock down Matthew Stafford, lock down Cooper Cup, and hopefully that, that leads to better results for the rest of this game for us. Our offensive game plan on the day, we're going to try to run the ball to the outside. I'm not confident in our pass game just yet. What I am confident in is what I saw out of our rookie damon pierce out of our last game he had incredible incredible average on the day and if we run outside hopefully we can get away from aaron donald so hopefully if i get to choose we're going to be running to the other side of the field so for our goals for the week lovey smith has submitted his and a lot of these are in realization of how the first game went and understanding we're in the preseason these games might get messy they may not turn out perfectly as we're trying new things so let's get straight into what we've looked at here lovey smith has submitted that he wants 15 plus first down this is the goal for us that should be achievable especially with uh the amount of plays we're going to get in this game it may not we may get close we may not get there but we probably will get there Hopefully, this is something to build off of for the rest of the year and the rest of the preseason. Our offensive coordinator has said he wants to get 300-plus offensive yards. Hopefully, we're able to do that, relying heavily on the run game. Hopefully, our pass game contributes as well. And our defensive coordinator has said, allow 24 points or less. We are not stupid. We understand this, all, this LA Rams team won the Super Bowl. Incredible offense, incredible defense. Hopefully, we're able to exploit this defense, and hopefully, we are able to just hold up enough to contain this offense. Our weekly game plan overall submitted by me. I want to see us get one interception this week. I am challenging our backfield, our young rookie, hopefully star of this team for the future, Derek Stingley Jr., along with his mentor, his counterpart in the backfield, Chris Harris Jr. I want to challenge them along with our newly acquired strong safety, CJ Gardner Johnson. Yes, we traded players for him. We paid with draft picks. We need to see them step up. So hopefully I can see at least one of them or maybe any other any other player on our defense come up with an interception this week. And of course, before we get training started, our focus players for the week are Derek Stingley Jr., CJ Gardner-Johnson, and Jalen Petre. Unfortunately, out of our practice, we did see an injury to one of our cornerbacks, Isaac Yaidam. He picked up a broken finger. That's going to last him two weeks. That'll be the rest of the preseason. Hopefully he's able to survive on this roster on being un unable to show his true skills for the rest of the year hopefully he has shown enough to show that he belongs on this team with the one game he has played in the preseason and out of our practice the one thing i do want to highlight i saw a lot of growth out of brevin jordan here we decided his focus we honestly we want him to learn how to be more possessive we want him to understand yes you gotta have to have good hands on this team and we saw that he got greater awareness catching lead block run block run block power and short route improving overall very well a young player like him we're hoping he continue to develop like he has here and with all of that our time is up here on this news episode we are hoping to head into the second week of the preseason our first season here as our as me as the owner Hopefully, we're able to have a much better game than we did last week. Hopefully, we're able to get a win. At the very least, we're hoping we can keep the score a little bit closer and we're able to achieve some of those goals for us so that we can learn to grow upon them as well. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you guys enjoyed what you saw here today, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notifications down below. I appreciate the support more than you guys can ever imagine. And we will see you guys for week two of the preseason against the Los Angeles Rams. Catch you guys later.